Just here on KCAL 9 News at 9, there's more news ahead. KCAL 9 News at 10 starts right now. Live from the Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is KCAL 9 News at 10. Live, local, late breaking. Gunfire at a skating rink and now a homicide investigation. A New Year's party turns violent, leaving a security guard dead. Why was he attacked? And drivers are loving the prices at the gas pumps right now, but a new energy regulation could send them in the other direction soon. And taking action against a deadly trend. One group's mission to toughen the laws against hit and run drivers. Happy New Year. I'm Peter Dowse. And I'm Elsa Ramon. New Year celebrations at a skating rink ended in deadly gunfire. A security guard was shot to death and the shooter is still out there tonight. Sheriff's investigators are still trying to figure out what led to the guard shooting at Cal Skate in Grand Terrace on the 22,000 block of Commerce Way. KCAL 9 Inland Empire reporter Crystal Cruz is live in Grand Terrace with more on the family man who was shot and killed. Hi, Elsa. He went by the name Big Will. He owned a security business, and he's said to be the type of man who would give you a job when no one else would. Tonight, behind me, investigators are still out here all these hours later, gathering every little bit of evidence. When a bullet tore through the side of Michael Marcoli's big rig truck, he was inside sleeping. It was around 2 in the morning. So I woke up to my amazement and saw muzzle flashes coming from both sides of the parking lot. Saw people scattering. Michael then called 911 to report a shooting at Cal Skate in Grand Terrace. The skating rink was hosting an all night New Year's Eve party. 20 year old William Johnson was just one of a couple hundred party goers. I just thought it was going to be fun all night. I didn't expect I would have stayed at home if I knew anything was going to happen. Security guard Richard Williamson was shot and killed outside of the rink. Williamson's son told us off camera his 48 year old dad went by the name Big Will and owned a security business. It's really hard for me to say, but I, I saw the uh, security officer um, go down and uh, he died a hero. What was he doing? He was returning fire and protecting the people on the inside. CSI spent the day around the rink taking pictures. Party goers were told to leave their cars right where they were inside the parking lot. Everything possibly evidence in this homicide and attempted murder investigation. We just saw investigators releasing some of these cars to their owners. Also, two other people were shot. One of them also a security guard. The suspects are still outstanding. Police deputies need any information you might have. Give them a call. Reporting in Grand Terrace tonight, I'm Crystal Cruz, KCAL 9 News. All right, Crystal, thank you. Our other big story tonight, a cold snap that continues to send the Southland into a deep freeze. Here's a live look at LAX right now. KCAL 9's Kai Goldberg joins us tonight with what is expected to be another very chilly night, Kai. Yeah, indeed, Peter. Elsa, thank you very much. We are already feeling the chill out there. Take a look right now. We're looking at downtown Los Angeles in the mid-40s, valleys, low 40s. Look at the Inland Empire creeping further into the 30s as the minutes pass by. Peaches right now, 40s. The mountains, of course, very frigid. Nine degrees up in the Big Bear area. And, of course, the high deserts are cold in the mid-20s. But look at what happens through the midnight hours. Those numbers, they decline even further. Look at the high deserts into the teens. Again, mountains, single digits downtown looking for 37. The Inland Empire going for about 29 degrees from both San Bernardino and Riverside. Winds are light, but that freeze warning is in play. We'll go through it. How long will it stay cold? When's the warm up coming? It's all there for you in minutes. Back to you. All right, Kai, thanks. Forget being snowed in. Tons of frustrated travelers were snowed out, so to speak. KCAL 9 Inland Empire reporter Tom Waite shows us the traffic troubles that kept plenty of people away from the mountains. Earlier today, there were horrendous backups to some of the local mountain resorts. Tonight, things are improving, but the traffic is still bad as you head up to some of the local mountain resorts. A seemingly never-ending line of drivers inched towards Big Bear for most of the day. 
The mountain road gridlock was inescapable. Highway 38 was jammed, and the most popular route up the mountain, Highway 330, was backed up all the way down to the 210. People were even turning around in the middle of the freeway. We were just going to come up thinking, you know, there was just fresh snow and everything, and we got stuck in the on the road. The Ryman family made it as far as Angeles Oaks and decided to cut their losses and go home. It was bad. Just like stop and go, no, no way to go. And Big Bear has all the fun things for the kids, but this area here, it's fine for them to have a little walk, sled, have fun. Staring at hours on the road in traffic, other families did the same. There's enough snow here, the kids can have fun. We brought our sled, so let them sled right here and enjoy themselves. With local resorts across the area getting their first major blast of snow in recent memory, it's clear many folks wanted to take advantage of the holiday weekend to get on the slopes. But if you weren't patient, this was going to be a very painful ride. We're hungry. We Some of us had to use the restroom, you know, so. Among the reasons why things were so bad earlier today, authorities tell us that people did not know about the chain requirements and that slowed things down a lot. Reporting from Highland, I'm Tom Wade, KCAL 9 News. Folks have a lot of patience. Mm. And don't forget, you can check your weather anytime with our KCAL 9 weather app. Get the free download for Android products and on iTunes for Apple products. Developing news, two people are in custody after leading the CHP on a high-speed pursuit tonight on the 60 freeway. Officers originally tried to stop the car because of expired registration tags. Well, the driver sped off and finally pulled over in the city of industry and bailed out along with two passengers. They tried to hide in a Chevy dealership, but two of them were quickly apprehended by the sheriff's deputies. They are still looking for the third person. Police in Laverne are back to square one tonight in the investigation of the murders of Army and Shirley Isom. Their bodies were found in their home the day after Christmas. A man was questioned today, but he's since been released. KCAL 9's Rachel Kim is live in Laverne with the latest tonight on this investigation. Rachel. Elsa, Laverne police here say ever since the murders of the ISIMs, they've been on the lookout for anyone who matches the description of the suspect. Well, as you said, they brought one man in for questioning today, and we spoke with his wife tonight as she waited. We're just confused and kind of... It's a heartache for us, like, having to go through this. Amber Porter says she doesn't understand why her husband, William Denny, was taken in for questioning by Laverne Police soon after they came into town this afternoon. Laverne Police say they detained him because of similarities to a suspect description in the murders of Army and Shirley Isom. We're just passing through, trying to get home to Alabama, and then we just get picked up on some random thing that someone else did. Porter tells us she and her husband are homeless and were on their way to Ontario where her brother was supposed to pick them up. She says they weren't even in the area last Friday when Army and Shirley Isom were found brutally murdered in their Laverne home. Since then, investigators have been looking for a man neighbors described as suspicious and carrying a duffel bag or backpack. So William is not the person they're looking for? Very much not so. He told me to, that he was just coming in to be fingerprinted. They ran his name and everything and took pictures of his shoes and all that. Tonight, Laverne police held Amber's husband for a narcotics warrant out of Pennsylvania while waiting for sheriff's homicide detectives to come and question him. After detectives did, they determined he was not the suspect they are looking for. Trying to figure out what's going on. So. And Laverne police say Mr. Denny is expected to be released in the next few hours. As for the murders, a motive is still unknown right now. So if you have any information, you're asked to call L.A. County Sheriff's Homicide Detectives. Reporting live tonight in Laverne, Rachel Kim, KCAL 9 News.